Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Market for Tafa on ET now. I'm Winnie Motiwala along with me, Sheldon, as well. And Cheryl, surely turning out to be a good afternoon after we saw a bit of a dip. At least it's not that bad from the lows we've seen a recovery. Absolutely, a very uh, good afternoon to you, Winnie. You know, but yesterday during the show when we also said that it was a great going for the markets, oh, we yeah. gave up all of those gains. Hopefully, the scenario today is different because now we're inching towards the day's highest point and not the other way around. 22,700 once again reclaimed when you talk about Nifty. Let's take a look at Sensex because Sensex, remember, uh, hit that coveted 75,000 mark in yesterday's trading session and right now it's trying to make a comeback. Uh, 74,900 has been reclaimed once again in trade today. It, it was that 75,000 mark once again. Let's take a look at what Nifty Bank is doing. That's moving in tandem with the benchmark indices. You have the broader markets holding on to the territory as well. If you look at the soar, uh, uh, rather the point in today's training session, I believe was actually pharma in the morning. Uh, that Even was as of now, nothing defense. exciting okay, on nothing the pharma Nothing exciting bank. happening with the pharma index as of now. So if you look at the sectoral indices, it's only, uh, yeah, pharma and auto recovered from the day's lowest point, no doubt, both of them in the negative territory, however. But it's uh, the metal uh, index uh, that is uh, the fireworks along with oil and gas today. Absolutely, metal index doing the fireworks with oil and gas. Interesting, right? All those metal names shining bright and they've not stopped that run-up that we've seen in the recent time for the metal Absolutely. Pack. In fact, you know, we spoke a lot at length, uh, even uh, at 11 a.m. on the metal sector with our analysts and uh, all. Uh, they, and they believe that technically also it is set for a breakout once again. Absolutely. So interesting to watch out for in terms of the metal names. But there are a lot of other stocks that are moving into on the back of news flows and on the back of technical today. So on the technicals, we are joined while from the research team today we have Ashesha as well as Snehi joining in with us. So very good afternoon to all three of you all as well. And uh, we'll start with the first talk for today and I'm going to talk about MCX. We have Motila Loswal that has upgraded MCX to a buy from a previous neutral. They've hiked the target price to 4,300 rupees per share from the previous target price of 3,940 rupees per share. Look at the stock trading with gains of more than 5.5%, uh, 5 5.7, almost in the day point as of now. What Motila Oswal is highlighting that the new products and variants are uh, to the existing ones is the key growth driver that would come from MCX going forward. Regulatory measures as further to provide a stimulus. Retail participation that has also seen a growth and we are expecting a further growth in terms of a headroom of growth that one could expect is high over there. That are the key factors that uh, Motila Oswal is keeping an eye out on and other than that, even the FBI participation, they said that that is likely to improve with the May launch. So, interesting uh, name coming in, MCX, run up of almost 6% as of now in today's day. Alright, that is MCX for you. Let's put the spotlight on the OMCs. No doubt, the sharp rise that the crude oil prices witnessed. We've seen that crude oil prices actually cool off now. And Sneha, let's talk about BPCL then. How is this one looking on the charts? You no doubt, every time a crude oil prices move in the international market, the volatile moves here back home for OMCs. But despite that, keeping that aside, how are the charts for BPC are looking to you? Uh, uh, if we look at the chart structure, we have seen a very strong run uh, in BPC. Uh, if you see, uh, it has been forming in higher higher bottom kind of a structure. And uh, I think uh, at present, there is a strong base formation around 560 or so. Um, any dips, I would say uh, it is an opportunity to go long, I feel. Uh, the kind of up move we have seen, I think there is a strong base around uh, 55-60 or zone and on an immediate basis I believe some uh, who wants to you know go ahead and take a fresh long uh, can buy this counter with a strict stop loss around 580. Uh, upside any move beyond uh, 620 would be interesting to watch out. In case of any move beyond 620 we may see a strong up move towards the record highs of uh, 688-690 zone and above. Alright let's talk about Vedanta then and that particular uh, counter is uh, soaring in trade today. It is hit its two-year high levels, biggest intraday gain since over six months. And why is that? No doubt the metal rally is underway, but CLSA has gone ahead and upgraded the stock to a buy from an underperform rating, saying that, that the company will benefit from ongoing commodity upcycle. Therefore, they have hiked the target by 50% to 390 rupees per share. And by today's move, the stock is already uh, seeing a good up move in trade. This implies above 15.4% upside to the closing price of Tuesday. And uh, now the stock is trading higher by about 9% or so. Apart from that, the copper prices also have hit above 14-month high earlier this 
month as well. The stock is gaining for fifth uh, fifth consecutive session, and that big big upgrade coming in from CLS is also aiding the stock into trading session. So that is Vedanta for you up almost nine percent trade today. That's Vedanta, but let's talk about Reliance Infra. That's uh, sulking away in trade today, Snehi, and why is that so? Yeah, as you mentioned, the stock is sulking away, and uh, the stock. Is locked in lower circuit of 20%. I believe the chart is not updated there. Let's understand why this is happening. The Supreme Court has allowed the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation's plea against an arbitral uh, arbitral award of 8,000 crore that was in favour of Anil Ambani owned Reliance Infrastructures Metro arm, which is Delhi Airport Metro Express Private Limited. Now, the Supreme Court upheld the High Court's div uh, division bench decision, which said that the arbitral award against the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, which is the DM. Suffered patent illegality. The bench, led by Chief Justice of India D Y Chandrachud, said that uh, the earlier SC verdicts in the case resulted in resulted in a miscarriage of justice and warranted it to exercise the curative jurisdiction. Now, the amounts deposited by D M R C have to be refunded, and any amount paid by the petitioner as part of the coercive action has to be refunded as well. This is what the bench has said. Remember, the 2017 arbitral award was to the tune of 7,200 crores. Along with an amount uh, of interest and other charges that swelled up to over 8,000 crore rupees, and now the Supreme Court has overturned this decision and reversed it, which is uh, not in favour of Reliance Infra or its arm. So, on the back of this new slow, where they have to go ahead and refund all the money, uh, the stock is uh, locked in lower circuit 20% as we speak. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on Reliance Infra, but Seha coming to you, Tata. Can uh, making the list of a lot of technical analysts. Uh, what's the verdict for this from your side? You know, finally, do you expect Tata Chemicals to see a better up move compared to other Tata companies which have already seen a run up? Tata Chemicals was something that was missing in the limelight. Uh, yes, if you see uh, Tata Chemical, it's been third week that we have seen a positive flow for the weekly uh, part. If you see. Uh, this counter, if you see in the March March first week, we have given uh, has given a very strong move, and after that, it, this counter has been attracting decent volumes. Even uh, we did see some profit taking, but I think there is now uh, a strong base around 1120 odd zone. So if someone is looking to go ahead and long, I would say one can think of going long in this counter with a stop loss of around 1135 uh, for now. Any move. On say uh, 12, uh, 20, uh, 12, 30 would be interesting to watch out and may you know bring it uh, towards the uh, recent highs of uh, 13, 50 and above levels. So I would say uh, the counter looks good, the volumes are good. Any dips should be an opportunity to go along in this count. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on Tata Chem. Let's move on, talk about Godrish Properties. That one is a stock we're keeping an eye out on. We've seen the realty names really buzz away in trade. Today, Godrish Properties. Is a bit subdued, but the note that we have is from Jeffries is a positive one at least because they've hiked the target price. They believe that overall it's going to be expecting a market of around 3,175 rupees per share. Uh, FI 20 sales have surged, momentum they expect is to continue, as well as in terms of the timely land acquisitions that the company has made and, uh, and entry in Hyderabad will imply a good growth for uh, FI 20 for the company, even uh, with the base over a high base. Also, they're expecting a decent. And FY25. They expect much higher in terms of the margins of these new projects that will be executed. So that is why Jeffries is positive. They're maintaining a buy on this one. Target price of 300, uh, 3,175. Yesterday the stock is a bit up here, but let's not forget we already seen such a sharp run up in all these real times. So a bit of a profit booking, maybe you could say, is coming in, but nothing bad in terms of the fundamentals for the company. All right, so that is Godrish Properties for you. But let's put the spotlight on the entire metals pack then, and who better to us about what exactly happened in the sector than Ashesha. Ashesha, I did speak about uh, Vedanta for that on back of that CLSA upgrade, but uh, excluding that, if you look at the entire metals pack, huge rally underway. And it's not just today, right? It has been a clear outperformer over the last many uh, trading sessions. And today we have a report that has come in on Jefferies on the entire Indian metal and mining space where they continue to be very constructive on the counter. Uh, their preferred buy is Coal India. Followed by Hindalco and Tata Steel. So for Coal India, they are maintaining their buy stock with a target price of 520. For JSW Steel, Tata Steel and Hindalco, they've gone ahead and hiked their target price for all these three metal names. Uh, they say they are seeing signs of a rise 
tied the recent recovery in global PMI data not only from China but across the globe from other developed and emerging markets a positive sign and the demand for commodities is likely to inch higher from the current levels. Metal and mining team remains constructive in the sector is what they've said in their report with preference for copper and aluminium stocks on the back of this report and of course on the back of global momentum that we are seeing in commodity prices we have all the metal counters and focus there. All right, so that is why metal counters are in focus. Let's talk about uh, then uh, two stocks that are in focus. And not only today, they were in focus yesterday as well. One is PB Fintai and the other one is ICICI Lombard. And the reason being that yesterday they announced uh, that tie-up coming in for both of these counters. And today, if you look at uh, PB Fintech, uh, the stock is seeing a good up in trade today. Uh, in fact, uh, to uh, dwell in a bit more deeper in what exactly is happening is the fact uh, that the company tied up with ICICI Lombard and with uh, that partnership it will allow the firms to access nearly 10 million customer via its channel including policy platforms. This is what ICICI Lombard actually informed uh, yesterday the exchanges. On back of that the stock actually hit 5% uh, highest level since November 2021 that is PB Fintech for you. Also you have a note that come out from Morgan Stanley as well on that particular development that gave a thumbs up uh, to a PB Fintech also saying that the prospects will be brighter for the company. So that's PB Fintech for you hit over two year high on back of that deal. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on PB Fintech uh, and ICICI Lombard over there. But let's move on talk about Apollo Tires. Apollo Tires, they are today's buzzing away in trade. But when you look at the YTD performance last one month, quite subdued. Um, would you say it's the right time to enter overall Apollo Tires right now? Is it attractive after the subdued the last three months? Yes, I very much. In fact, if we see uh, the correction are said to be healthy and someone who wants to, you know, and I think this is a good opportunity. We have seen a strong base formation around 4.5 or so. And after some consolidation, I think uh, finally uh, this counter has been, uh, you know, so far has surpassed the resistance zone around 475 or so. Uh, it has also managed to, you know, surpass 89 EMA and the uh, important moving averages. So I think any follow up uh, in this counter is very much likely. So I would recommend if anyone wants to go ahead and uh, long for a uh, for a short term perspective with a strict stop loss of today's low that is around 472, one can go long for the target of say uh, 510. Alright, so that is Apollo Tires for you. Ashesha, let's talk about NMDC in particular. This one is actually moving on back of various positives, isn't it? And look at the kind of move that we have seen on the stock. The stock is up 7% as we speak. Uh, remember, INO prices had fallen from that $140 per ton mark in January this year to below $100 per ton in April this month. Uh, but now, analysts believe that uh, INO prices are expected to remain range bound and perhaps they've bottomed out at the current level. Uh, rise in INO prices coupled with rise in HRC prices that we're seeing uh, makes analysts believe that perhaps there is limited down risk as far as NMDC prices are concerned. Uh, remember, analysts fear that perhaps NMDC will go ahead and aggressively cut prices in April, but now that risk is limited to some extent and hence that is positive for NMDC. Several other positives, it has strong balance sheet, cash position is quite strong, they have limited capex plans going forward which will cushion its ca cash position and it is available at it for a dividend yield of about 4%. So several positives fundamentally and the most important that iron ore prices look bottomed out and hence the stock is gaining nearly 7% today. Surely keeping an eye out on NMDC today, buzzing away in trade, lot of positives for NMDC. Let's move on, talk about the mid-cap IT names, Neha, Birla, Soft, a run-up that we've already seen while you compare to a large-cap IT name in the last six months to get the run-up, it's almost up almost 37%, but last three months, as of now, it's muted. What is the view now on Birla Soft? Uh, is it the right time to enter or maybe you're just waiting out for it? I think uh, considering the correction what we have seen uh, recently and the uh, support has been formed, uh, the counter has been taking around uh, 720 levels. I think it is interesting at this moment and the risk reward ratio looks quite good. Uh, I believe uh, 89 AMA is acting as a support uh, on the daily chart frame and I think uh, one can, you know, think of both uh, long in this counter with a strict stop loss of say around uh, 710 uh, for the targets of uh, say uh, 790 
so that would be the target on the higher side and move beyond 790 would be interesting to for this counter and we may see some fresh momentum coming in at present it may take time but yes, uh, the levels of 790 is very much possible Okay. Level of 790 is very much possible, may take time, but yes, it's there on the annual. But yes, keeping an eye out on that. Next stock is Glanama, and we are highlighting this one because yesterday Cheryl already mentioned that this is going to be in focus on the back of a wild deal. We do have the names that have come in, we did have a so fair So, did you idea. take all three of them? No, sure. I, I've taken one of them. Oh. <laughs> I love the others. But yes, Glanama is the one that I'm going to talk about today. We did have uh, one of the promoters of the companies sell. Uh, so, this company is related to the promoter, previous promoter. That is Nicomac Machinery Private Limited, which is an entity connected to Dr. Uh, Ravi, who was previously the promoter of the company. Now they sold their entire stake, 18.55 lakh shares, 1.19% in the company at an average of around 1,735. As well as uh, Lakumi Trust sold 61.65 lakh shares, which is 3.74%. So uh, overall, when you're looking at it, we're seeing a bit of an impact coming in on that. The names of the buyers were not too, uh, not that have uh, come in yet, but uh, you know, or, or in terms. Percent wise, they, they must have bought. That's why we do not have the bulk deals. But uh, yes, uh, that's why we're keeping an eye on Gland Pharma today. Uh, interesting to watch out for this one in trade today. All right, that's all about Gland Pharma. Let's take a look at Biocon and what that one is doing on the charts. Uh, Sneha, what are the next next pieces of target that you can watch out for this one? The chart structure for Biocon on the monthly chart, if you see, it's been quite some time that the next discounter has been, you know, trading in a range of 300 on the side and on the lower side we are seeing a support around uh, 220 so this has been a broad range uh, for quite some time now I would say it's been more than a year now uh, I think uh, today uh, we are seeing some volume based buying and any move you know uh, beyond say 290 uh, would be interesting to watch out any move beyond 290 or 300 on the higher side uh, will you know improve the overall chart structure for this counter so we need to keep a close watch on this counter and the levels I mentioned, if anyone wants to go ahead and long at current level, I would say with a very uh, strict stop loss of around 267, one can look long in this counter. Any move beyond 290, uh, 295 would trigger some momentum in this counter. All right, that is Biocon for you. Let's stay put with uh, then what is happening in uh, the pharma space itself because you have Sun Pharma Advanced that has come out uh, with, a, uh, with a stock exchange note uh, today and the stock down about 5%, locked in the lower circle of about 5%. They said that the drug trial for the early Parkinson's uh, patients has failed. As therefore, they said that they are going to stop doing those tests. So on back of that, the stock has fallen about 5% or so. The company said that the study on using uh, uh, Batinib uh, drug on the early Parkinson's patient did not show any benefit. The stock, uh, if you look at uh, if, uh, post uh, that, actually this announcement came just before the market could open. So there you go. When it opened only, it opened in the lower circuit, circuit about yeah. 5%. Okay, surely keeping an eye on that. But let's move on and talk about the private bank. The large one there is HDFC Bank, Ashesha. Why is this one in focus? What's the reason for you picking it out for us today? HDFC Bank is in focus and that is because Bernstein has come out with a report uh, where they are talking about uh, improved communication that is expected from HDFC Bank along with its Q4 results this time. They say they believe improved communication could lead to re-rating for the stock from current levels. With a solid deposit attrition number, it could be a strong quarter for HGFC Bank this time, even if bank manages to deliver flat net interest margins on a sequential basis. What could make it a more fantastic quarter is HGFC Bank if it goes ahead and addresses bigger investor complaints with respect to communication. They are all, uh, maintaining their outperform stance with a target price of 2100. The stock is currently trades at 1500 odd levels. Perhaps some more clarity that is needed from HDFC Bank along with its Q4 results uh, with respect to investor concerns going forward. All right, moving on this, Neha, let's talk about IDFC First Bank then. And how is this one actually looking to you on the charts? There was a time where everyone was so bullish on IDFC First Bank. Everyone expected this one to see a spectacular rally. But that has not transpired as expected. In the last three months, the stock is about three and a half percent or so do you think that the pickup that is seen in the last one to two weeks will sustain uh yes very much likely because if you see uh there uh, there was a resistance there was a falling trend line resistance in this counter which has been surpassed uh, it's it has been holding at the higher levels it's not that uh that uh, 
the counter is uh, again seeing some profit uh, taking from the resistor zone so that is very interesting to watch out i think uh, if anyone wants to put and long this counter with a strict stop loss of the gap uh, gap area around uh, 81 i would say that you can go along this uh, one can expect a target of around say 88 89 in this counter uh, for a very short term uh, trade but uh, if someone is holding for a long term perspective 90 92 level is the important to watch out any move beyond this uh, would be interesting and we may see uh, the follow up buying coming in this counter so uh, at present 88 89 is the target for a very short term trade and any move above 92 would be interesting to watch any move about 90 about 92 will be interesting to watch for idfc first bank They're keeping an eye on that let's move on talk about godavari power uh, and why one and focus uh, the uh, company has actually resumed its 8 megawatt of biomass power plant and this is uh, of uh, ferroy alloys limited that caught fire in fourth on fourth of uh, august 23 finally they've resumed the operations mm-hmm. there and uh, this is now uh, the plant has resumed operations with effect from 27th of march under trial and has resumed in full capacity as of 8th april so yes finally everything is back to normal over there in the plant and that is why obviously in terms of production let it be mm-hmm. the capacity utilization that comes up for the company and that is why we are seeing godavari uh, power that is in focus trading with gains of almost 8% as of now up uh, on near the day's has point all right let's move on then let's talk about another bank then this is a large cap private sector bank kotak mahindra bank sneha and how are the charts looking for kotak mahindra bank uh are there any uh, fair set of targets that one should watch out for because the stock has done absolutely nothing over the last few months look at the chart structure uh, yes it rightly said has been uh, you know trading in a very uh, broader range of say, uh, uh, 16 20 16 30 on the lower side and on the higher side the range is around uh, 2050 2070 odd zone so this is the range but uh, for a very term perspective if we see we have we are seeing a strong uh, base formation around uh, 1700 odd level 1770 odd zone and uh, the kind of move today we are seeing i think it has so far the 20 uh, 200 day simple moving average on the daily charts which is interesting so i believe we may see an up move towards say uh, 19 19 20 odd zone so 100 points from here on uh, i think one Keep a stop uh, stop loss around uh, 1770 or so, and can go ahead and long this counter. Uh, banking index has been doing good, and uh, if you see ICIC Bank is the top performer at present. Uh, I think uh, Kotak Bank would really uh, gear up, and it has it is playing a very important level. It has been trading for long time in a consolidation zone, and after long time, we are seeing some buying happening over here. So I would uh, recommend buying this counter as uh, with a strict stop loss. 178 Okay by this counter with a stop loss do keep an eye out on the stop loss number as well let's move on and talk about paisa low digital snehi uh, what an up move that we are seeing in the stock today q4 updates coming in for this one yes when you absolutely stock is doing pretty well up 4% on the back of the order for updates that it uh, released yesterday and some good set of numbers coming in let's take a look now assets under management which is aum group 32% to approximately 4622 crore rupees versus 3492 crore in FY23 all of these updates are uh, for FY24 now disbursements up 30% at roughly 3588 crore rupees versus roughly 2600 crore rupees in FY23 now the co-pending loan disbursement has grown by 100% to 1128 crores as of 31st March 2024 compare it to 564 at the end of march last year customer franchise also at 4.29 million versus 1.5 uh, million last year so a big expansion coming in over there as well geographic footprint uh, stood at 2455 uh, touch points as of 31st march this year as compared to 1022 uh, touch points last year so quite the expansion coming in over there as well and also company in march had announced a bonus issue in the ratio 1 is to 1 so this is Thing that um, the uh, Q4 updates uh, highlight, and also with notice that the company will be meeting on the 26th of this month uh, to consider and approve their audited uh, FI24 results. So we'll be watching out for final numbers as and when they come. But on the back of very strong updates, a strong uh, the stock up a four percent as we speak. All right, let's move on. 
let's talk about a real estate player which just got recently listed on the bourses that Suraj uh, Real Estate uh, develop, uh, Real Estate Developers. Uh, they have uh, said that they've amicably uh, uh, settled legal dispute with OL, uh, OLV and OLPS Society. This unlocks a GDV potential about 350 crore rupees and a redevelopment with GDV of around 225 crore rupees. They're saying that as per consent terms, the companies agreed to pay the landowner about 47 crore rupees. In additional flats also they will be giving to OLV and OLPS Society. So on back of that, the stock is seeing uptick of about four and a half percent or so because the fact that this uh, settles the legal dispute absolutely keeping an eye on that but now on the charts let's talk about coal india how are you seeing this uh, in terms of the technical levels or the target that one should keep an eye out on last three months almost um, 18 20 percent return is what we're seeing more upside yeah that looks very much likely if you see uh, the overall chart structure is very strong in fact we did see uh, a very strong uh, after uh, after in this counter surpass 250 or so, it has almost touched like uh, almost touched 500 I would say uh, we have seen some profit taking but recent uh, but from the ATN EMA support on the daily chart this counter is again back and uh, today it, has, it is up nearly three and a half percent I think any move beyond uh, 460 uh, 470 465 470 zone uh, very good for this counter I think we may see an up move beyond the, the beyond the all-time highs even uh, so I would say if someone is holding it already can continue to hold it if someone is looking to add on fresh positions for a short-term perspective can uh, go ahead and log this counter with a fixed stop loss of around uh, 426 upside the level to watch out will be uh, 467 and if surpass that then we may see an up move beyond say 500 even. all right so that's uh, the take coming and on Coal India, on that note, we slip into a break on this edition of uh, Market Offer. Stay tuned. Most talks on the other side don't go anywhere. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to 18 Now.